Oops. Hi there. Oh, um, Shauna here with uh, Welcome to Painting with Shauna on Thursdays. It has been a kind of day and uh, so I'm here. I made it. <coughs> the paint is out. We are ready to go. Um, we are uh, I'm just going to spritz the paint because I just put it out and, and I had the heater running in here because it's pretty dang cold outside so I wanted to warm up this basement room a little bit before I started to paint. Uh, today we I'm announcing which pa which uh, bird won the uh, the vote. Thank you to everyone who did. I was surprised at how many people voted. Thank you very much. And the grand winner is the Pine Grosbeak. So it's a beautiful male red bird <coughs> and we're going to get painting on that. <coughs> oh, excuse me. If you uh, would like, you can go over to my website and sign up for the newsletter. The people who get my weekly newsletter actually got the winning bird um, a couple days ago and they saw another image where I had put paint chips as I was trying to figure out what colors I was seeing on the on the image. So if you head over there you get the secret stuff, the other stuff that nobody else gets to see because you're on the newsletter. And uh, let's get painting. Okay. Oh, the first thing I wanted to do before I actually started painting is I wanted to show you um, I'm just going to pour some water out because I have a bit of a cough, <coughs> dry throat. I wanted to show you um, what I did while I was thinking about this image. So I'm going to show you a range of images, four, uh, four slides. So this is the image that you saw when you were doing your vote. And you can see that there's all sorts of branches over top of the bird. There's all sorts of chaos. So what I chose to do was, first of all, I made the branches disappear that went over top of the bird. And I ramped up the red a little bit. I saturated it just a little bit. And then I blurred the background. I got rid of some of the excess um, uh, branches that I didn't really like, that they were too much in there, so I kind of made them disappear. I love computer programs. Um, and you can see that I've lowered the chroma of the background, but I did one more, which I'm not going to paint from, but I just wanted to show you how much fun I had. And there is the last one where I really uh, took the background and I just had a lot of fun really blurring it out and seeing what that would look like. It's a really interesting sort of circly shapes that is in behind the bird. That could have been interesting to paint, but it's not. I wanted still that feeling of that you're in the bush without it being too much, too much. So I've got it drawn on and we're ready to get going. For those people who actually got the newsletter, I did end up changing the colors of the bird a little bit. Um, I'm going to start with the background. The background is a low chroma yellow. And so I'm going to start with just putting in shapes here, thinking about what I'm seeing. I'm going to spritz my paint again, keep it nice and fresh. It's hard when it's um, the furnace is on a lot and so I'm just going to put shapes in. I'm going to jump two values of this low chroma yellow, this 10Y, is it 10, 10YR? Yeah, uh, yeah 10YR um, for those people who have Munzel, a Munzel book, that's where I'm at. And I'm just building up the shapes, the, the shifting of values. I too much paint on there, so I'm just going to soften that out. 
I'm not going to worry about going over the edge of the line for the uh, for um, the bird and so forth because I'm not, yeah, it's perfectly fine. It'll work out all right. I'm just going to be nice and mindful when I'm putting this down and putting these value shifts down because I want to come back and I will, when I go the second time, I will bring that, um, this brush here, that Simply Simmons, and I will soften the edges and I will blend them together more like this. But I don't have to do that with the first pass. That's the second pass that I'll worry about. But I'm looking back and forth. I'm, uh, oh, remember, I can't see any comments. I can upload, but I can't download and upload at the same time. So if you have any comments, um, have you seen um, Pine Grove Speaks where you live? They love boreal forests. And I know I've got fabulous pictures from my parents' place that uh, my parents had a whole huge hurt, um, amount of them show up the other day. Well, that was exciting, males and females. So if you've seen these Pine Grow Speaks in person, just leave me a comment and tell me that. that. In Yellowknife, if you're looking for the Pine Grow Speaks, you will be looking down in um, uh, on Lindquist Drive and you will see them. Um, they feed at two homes on Lindquist Drive that feed the birds and and these, because they're by the Willow Flats and by, um, yeah, by Willow Flats, they get some really interesting birds that, that uh, I don't get here where I live, sadly. I don't, I'm not close enough to the bush to get the interesting birds. So I'm looking at the shapes. I'm just getting, ra they're random enough that even if I don't match them 100%, that's all right. It gives the sense of it. One of the, the, some of the branches that I removed was the branch that if you go back and look at the picture um, on social media, there was a branch right behind the head. There was a bunch of branches here that I removed because they really didn't add anything to the, um, to the whole uh, piece. So I just thought, nah, I don't need them in there. We'll just make them sort of move on and, and be out of the way. Sometimes less is more. I hear that every once in a while. Now, I love detail. So all of this sort of interesting shapes here that give you an illusion of, of, um, of, being in the forest, because you still want the birds to be in context, or at least I want the birds to be in context. Okay, so I'm just standing back to look. Uh, I, you know, it's just, um, it helps me to sort of see where I'm at and where to go next. darker here. Yeah. Yeah, I had lots of fun playing with this image to get it to this point. I'm starting to understand my affinity program that I'm using. Um, so that's really helpful. And at some point, I think I'm going to go and take a, a course, an uh, online course, so that I can really use that program to its highest potential. So today was pretty frosty. We've had um, ice fog the last couple days and so it's, you know, it's February in the north. So it's not going to be warm. Okay, and I want to go one step darker here. Right here, there's this shape here. That goes here. Let me try that 
try that again with something a little darker. Now when I, when I was manipulating the background, I did lower the chroma, which means I made it more gray. Um, I didn't want it to be, I wanted the color to be in the bird. I didn't want it to be in the background. So I made some decisions of how I wanted to paint it. And, oops, I need some light there. And I altered those in, in the, um, well, working on, that's a interesting little branch. Sorry, I'm concentrating and talking at the same time. Always a little challenging. Okay, we're going to come in and get that in there. And I can see there's some little bit of dark. So this low chroma yellow, the, the color I chose to, I did to make it was yellow ochre. And you don't, you can hardly tell that it's yellow ochre because it's all by itself. When I get the grays on here, you will, you will notice that it is gray, but it's more, um, more chromatic than the, the regular gray in my brush. So I'm using my uh, Princeton Dakota, that, that stiff brush that I really like because I love putting thin layers of paint on, especially at the start. It makes no difference with acrylic, but it still is something I prefer is to work with smaller amounts of paint. Everything is just a squint my eyes and take a look and see what I'm seeing and Oops, I've got too much paint there. Yes. Building it up. Building it up slowly. The first layer, of course, is not the prettiest layer, that's for sure. But it gets the value context in so that I can come back and say, oh no, that needs to be lighter. Right here needs to be lighter on that second pass. It makes the second pass so much easier. And I did, I chose not to put a base coat on. I'm just working from, from the, uh, just right on the white, partially because red is very see-through. It tends to be transparent. And if you put a color underneath, then you're having to work harder to get that that um, that red to be as clear as I want it to be. So I don't mind covering a little bit and I might have to come in and, um, I might have to come in and put some white just to cover that area so that the red is standing out more. Grab some of that light, hold it this way. And I'm just going back and forth here in the little puddles that I have. Actually, there's an idea. I'll take a picture at the end and put that, uh, I'll make a blog post on it. Now, I don't want too much paint. And I can see that some of that is getting to be too much paint. So I'm going to get a clean brush and I'm just going to soften it. This right here is interesting because it's going in behind that branch that is still there. There's all sorts of detail in here I'm not worried about. I'm just going to work around it and uh, come back and put it in on that second pass when I can come in with that, that Simply Simmons brush and, and uh, really do that. So tell me if this is the bird you actually wanted to, you voted for. And what did you like about the bird that you voted for? Because, um, you know, I have lots of pictures of birds and I'm going to try. My goal is to try and, and paint birds that fit with the time of year that I'm doing the live stream. So right now it's winter, so I'm thinking about that. Uh, 
Um, so I actually, the, these images are chosen from the right time of year on purpose. And if you're having nice weather because it's warmer where you live, you can share that with me. It makes me feel like, oh, someday, someday we'll be able to travel again. Then we'll become snow koalas and I'll be doing my live streams from Australia. And it'll be Australian birds that you're voting on because our oldest son lives in Australia. And uh, we can go hang with him for a while. Okay, so this is a little strong. I'm just going to soften it a little bit. I'm not going to worry too much about it because I know that when I come for the next layer, um, I can make all of those changes. This area is quite very subtle, so I'm just going to kind of put in a whole area of mostly the same value. And then I'll come back and play with adding the slightly lighters and the slightly darkers in the shapes that I'm seeing. Okay, nice and slow and careful and methodical. I'm a slow painter. There's nothing I can do about that. I just am. That's what I am. Okay. Oh, look at that. There's light here. And then there's light down here. Well, it doesn't look very light right now, but when I get the bird in place and, um, and everything in place, then the light will look light. Right now, against the white, it looks pretty dark. Okay, so that's coming. Let's get some of this value again. And I'm coming down and I'm just going to put a darker, slightly darker value between because it seems that these are branches showing up between all of the, this, the light area, whatever that light area is. Now this picture is from February. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's from February of last year. Um, I just went and hung around Lindquist Drive by and and in my vehicle and what I did was um, I, I used my vehicle like it's a hide and I just hide in there and I open the window when they come. I shut off the heat and I'm wearing all my winter clothes because you're gonna I, I need that <laughs> because it's cold outside and I'm not running the vehicle because I need the vehicle not to have any hot air leaving because it impacts um, taking pictures and being able to focus in on what's happening outside of the vehicle. Okay, so it's coming. I'm just going to lighten that a little bit more. Because I can see, I can lighten it a little bit more. I wonder what that light is in behind us. Must be snow or something, because I don't know. That's kind of up in the trees. I don't know. So at the end, if you stay right to the end, I have the raven painting that... I forgot to show at the start. Well, maybe I'll just sneak it in here right now. And when, so this is the Raven painting that I painted the last two weeks. Uh, the eBay auction is live and the link will be below. Um, after I finish, I will go and put the link out. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And it's a very sweet, um, you know, 20 centimeter square or eight inches square. It's not very big. So 
So that will be out there when we get finished. The other thing is, I, I said earlier that I have a newsletter. The newsletter is, um, is once a week, though I do have a bigger list that I do uh, infrequently. But um, this one is once a week and it has, it'll have the updated picture of this before anyone else sees it on social media. It will have background pictures. Next week I'll, I'll put out other pictures that I took at the, around the same time with the same, uh, the same photo shoot. Um, so I'll have that in the newsletter. It will have, you know, whatever I can, you know, think about and think that you might find interesting. I will put those all out there so that you can check it out and see what you think of that. The other thing I've been working on is doing videos. I really haven't put much effort out to tell people I'm doing that. So when you go to YouTube, you will see the start of my uh, Acrylic Painting 101 class basics for beginners. And it is just, uh, it is just starting. So it's only a few weeks in and so a few lessons in. And it's a very detailed um, course where we really build some strong basic skills. Everything from reading paint tubes and getting the information we need off of them to, um, to making our own color wheel. To So if you've taken my class in Yellowknife, you'll know what that's about because you've, you've taken the class. But it's been a long time since I've had a class here in Yellowknife. Um, thank you, COVID, for the disruptions that you continue to bring to our lives. I think that's a fairly good start on the background. I'm not, yeah, I'm just going to spritz everything here. And now I'm going to come into the reds. And I've only mixed four reds. Um, here, I'll show you. I can show you my palette. So here are the four reds. Um, I have some lighter values down here to sort of manipulate with and to change it with. Um, and, uh, but I just wanted to start with the simple where, you know, this is the first pass and I will make more colors as I need them. But right now I'm just trying to get the first pass of the bird on. Where am I seeing sort of this brighter r orangey red? And then where am I seeing the darker alizarin crimson bit there? And I'm just going to soften that and make sure that, oh, don't get the water in there. That, that it's just that shape is there. This is a beautiful bird. And I love the females because they are gray. They are gray. You can see, see what I said about the transparency? So I might have to come in and put some white paint in this area afterwards so that I can come and uh, fix that. I'm going to take some of this, lighten that up weigh it down a little bit and bring it in here. One of the challenges with, with red is when you go to put colors like white into it, what's the first thing that happens? It turns to pink and I don't really want it to be completely pink. So I may discover after I finish the first round that I actually need to put a yellow onto my, a, a mixture of yellow and white to be able to lighten the values and to see what they're doing. But I haven't done that yet. I've just wait to see where I'm at. So all of these reds that I've, I've worked with here are, are really dark colors. So um, I lighten them with some, some white and put in some gray to bring down the the chroma so that it's more 
uh, is a little, it's not as straight out of the tube bright as you would find um, if you took something straight out of the tube. So even though it's a, an intense color, red um, also prints very weirdly. So it looks super intense there. Um, and yet it's not that intense when you're looking at them in real life. Okay. So we're starting to see a shape. And the two reds that I've used here are a Lizard Crimson, which uh, permanent, which has a touch of blue in it. You can see that. And Cad Red Medium, which has, um, it, it's more towards the orange. So I can mix the two reds together to sort of blend them and get them to where I want them to be. lightness into there. And I'm using grays to, to lighten them with. They're, so I'm changing the chroma a little bit as I'm going. Okay, so we've got some interesting things happening here. Um, yeah, let's just keep going here. Okay, we're nice and, oh, that's way too light. Okay, let's bring in a little bit more intensity of color. And, oof, yeah, clean your brush off first. That's helpful. So if you get something too light, you might have to, you will have to clean your brush off before you take that next step. So you can see where the light is hitting the bird by where it's uh, more intense, so like the color is just that little bit value lighter. There's all sorts of gray in here that we I will put in, probably not during a live stream. I might leave a little area to work on because that takes a level of concentration that um, is really hard to do when you're uh, concentrating too much on painting and and talking at the same time. Okay, so the fun part about this bird is the grays that are in it. And they're really quite lovely grays. Hmm, I need something a little lighter. Do I have any white in here? I do. I forgot to put some white out. Uh, grab my... <laughs> okay. So the tube, the, the pot doesn't want to open easily. So... Ah! <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I'm not putting any white out. I'll put some Munzel 9 out that's lighter. Okay. The white does not want to open. I guess I have to get the Vaseline out and get it settled back down so I can open the jar again. Okay, so let's just get some of that lighter Munzel gray in. And here is some lighter stuff, lighter, and then it goes at least two values darker. Okay, and we're here. Now when printing off, things often appear a little bit more chromatic, more blue than, than they actually are. So you can see kind of this looks in here more blue than, um, than I think it actually is. I think it's more of a neutral gray, but printing always sort of plays with your values and your colors and and even with this I have to I had to lighten it by 20% to get to where I wanted it to be because printing does darken up your images quite a bit okay 
Okay, and bring that down here. And a little bit of that blue red in here. It's building up. Hey, I'm standing back. How about we do around the eye? Um, I'll need a small brush to do that work with. Not too small. So the eye is quite dark. So I'm make sure that I'm dry here before I put my hand down. I'm going to put that eye in place. And it's going to be pretty flat right now because I'm not worried. I'm just getting things put in place to make sure that I'm happy with how it's looking. And I've added a little bit of extra water in to my paint to help move it along so that it goes into the ways I want to. Interesting. I don't know if that's uh, almost like that has a little bit of that, the background color in it. So I'm just going to do that with some gray. Oh, that, probably too much water, but that's all right. We'll fix this shape and we're just getting shapes in place. Okay. Now, this is a busy area. And we really want to make sure we have some of that information in there. But I, yeah, I'm just going to come and do. So the darkest value I'm working on in here is a value three. Um, if you look at the Munzel scale here, if you look at the Munzel scale, so you have value one all the way through up to value nine. So the lowest value I'm using is a three. And you can see the difference that that makes. It makes the image, though it looks like it's really dark next to it, um, because it's in comparison to everything else. So I, I do that so that I have more space to come back and back away and darken if I need to. But if I go too dark, then I struggle with um, managing that. And uh, so I, I really don't want to go too dark. I want to take my time getting there. And then if I find I need to be darker, then absolutely I will go a step darker and go into value two. But most of the time, by the time I finish, I actually don't I rarely do that. Okay, so I'm also seeing this is going to be interesting pattern when I come to it. I'm just going to put in this this gray shape that goes around the beak and around the eye and over the dark part of that goes surrounds the eye. And then it comes underneath the chin. Underneath the chin. Though I see that it, there's modulation happening. So at some points it's going to look like um, the bird is disappearing a little bit into the background. Which, you know, is actually a kind of interesting thing to do. Is to have that... Um, that look, that look to it. Okay. We're coming here and we're just going to keep on moving along. And we're, uh, let me see that I've got some darkness that needs to be here, but I'm not going to worry about that now. That will be on the second pass. I'm going to soften that into it. Okay, now let's get to the wing. Let's get to that wing. That's going to take some time. We're going to move carefully. 
and it seems to be as dark as as um, as the beak is. So I'm going to start with that value three and build up what I'm seeing with this value three. Nice and slow. I see there's modulation, but I'll come back and do that in the second pass. This pass is just to get it in place. And then I'll come with that light, which I'm using a value nine. And I'm going to come and and create these shapes. I'm looking and seeing. Here is that light, and it's that shape. And then there's another light here. Nothing will be perfect in the first pass. We're all paintings go through a really ugly stage before they get there. So we'll just keep working and we will get there nice and slowly. Remember if you're painting with acrylic to spritz regularly. I use distilled water in my, in my, um, okay, in my um, spritzers. Um, it just seems to be um, better. I, I like, like it. And when I leave something for a long time, I don't get the same level of mold that I was getting. Okay, clean my brush, dry it off, grab some of that light, remembering that we can um, at any point make things lighter and darker as we go on the second pass. But this first pass, I want to just sort of get the information in place. Looking at each of the feathers, and I'm carefully, carefully looking at the feathers and, and bouncing my eyes back and forth so that I can try and get that angle as accurate as possible. Now I can see that I lost some of that darkness. So I'm just gonna come in with a little bit of darkness and just touch the edge of it, there. So this is the painstaking part. This is the part that just takes time, takes, you know, concentration. Okay. And just, you know, if you're patient, you will get where you want to get to um, much quicker than if you get impatient, especially when you're painting birds. They are, uh, they have a certain patterning and if you try to rush it, um, everyone will know you, you didn't paint that bird right. Well, all the birders will know. All the birders will know. Every, that doesn't look right. Or it does look right. So I just take my time. I do the work slowly. And I build up an understanding of what I'm seeing by just looking back and forth. It's easy to get painting and forget to actually actually look at your image. Um, how many people have had that happen? If you're under, if you're if you've done painting and you've had that happen, leave a comment and how you know how did you remind yourself to to look at your image? Often the the resulting uh, painting is you know it loses its. Um, it's energy well, because you've lost your focus of where you were going with it. So this kind of thing I won't do during the live stream. Like I can put this part on, but when I get to actually creating this area, I need to be totally concentrating, totally focused. I can't be um, talking and walking at the same time. I just don't have that skill in me. Okay, let me get some of that light in there. Spritz my paint again. Because I had the heater on in here, it's a little drier and it's winter here. It's very dry in, in the winter. 
Yeah, I'll do it nice and slow and building it up till I get to the shape that I'm looking for. Okay. Then we have um, another row of feathers. It amazes me how quickly these birds can go from all folded up to moving quite quickly um, to, you know, to go to the food or whatever they need to, to, you know, go away from and then fold it right back up. It just is amazing. I'm not that coordinated, so I'm pretty sure I would not make a very good bird because I would not be that coordinated. Okay. So this has a lot of little detail in there that I've just sort of lost in putting the shape of that value in. And now I can come back and it's not as light. And it may be that I have too big of a brush too. I think that's probably part of my problem. So the next, the edges of the feathers here have a little hint of the light value, but not as light as these feathers have. It's just this very fine value of the edge of it. And my brush is way too big, so I'm going to actually stop because that's not, you know, I have to come back and correct that. Let's continue on. Now, one of the things I did here was I removed branches. There was branches over top. So the computer has kind of um, guesstimated what was happening there. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to guesstimate a little further because I feel like that needs to be brighter there. Okay, and we have all of these shapes here that are darker. Um, darker there. Clean it off. And then it's just like it's a value lighter. It's not hugely lighter around it. Just a value lighter. And it still may be too light, this value, but I won't know until it's all completed. So the sun is shining and I'm hoping uh, tomorrow or Saturday to actually go out and I've been working really hard here doing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so I'm hoping that tomorrow or Saturday I'll go out and see if they're around the uh, the pine grosbeaks. I'm sure they are. This is lighter in here but I can see that it's kind of this pinky light. So I'm just going to put those shapes in place here. And I'm not, we're not worried about perfection. We're just putting shirt place. Okay, we've got only 15 minutes left. Hopefully I'll get the bird done by then. Who knows? It just takes the time it takes. Um, what am I looking at here? Everything takes the time it takes. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. Oh, and I see there's a hint of that red right up there that I wasn't seeing before because, you know, you're, you're looking at it not as closely. And once you start looking closer, you start to see the little subtle shifts that are happening that um, give you the detail and the, um, the information to make it look like look like a, a gro pine grosbeak. These are very cool birds 
As I said, they're boreal birds. My parents have them in there in Northwestern Ontario. The males are this bright red. And in Yellowknife, we also have crossbills, uh, white wing crossbills and red, just red crossbills. And the males there, again, are bright red, which I find quite fascinating. There's got to be a reason for it, and I'm pretty sure somebody out there will know what that reason is. Just building up, giving the illusion of these shapes so that I can, when I come back for the second pass, I have an understanding of what I'm looking at. I'm back and forth with, um, with uh, my eyes, and I'm thinking about what shapes I'm seeing. Yeah, that's good. What I find interesting is how the gray has infiltrated in different areas. So I will try and put that information in with a really fine brush and give that sense of dimensionality. It was a cloudy day, so we don't have strong light. Um, I often find birds in strong light wash out too much, uh, but getting them in sunlight will be good. If it just happened to be that's the day I could go and it was dark, it was cl uh, cloudy. It wasn't dark, it was cloudy. Okay. Let's get that more chromatic red. And I'm building up what I'm the shapes I'm seeing around the head. So when I finish the first layer, there are times that I have to go and make new paint or, or different colors because what I thought would work out doesn't. So it's kind of like I've done a color study today. That's kind of what I look like I've done. And, um, and uh, um, tomorrow, uh, you know, or later I'll come back and I'll add more to it and get what the information I want onto it. Okay, spritz my water, my paint again, keep it fresh, keep it from drying out. And then I'm gonna bring in a darker value and just bring it in as a solid shape these kinds of shapes with their little tiny lines really require me to sit down and carefully, carefully um, put that information in. I can't do that standing up like I'm standing up right now. It's too much detail and it too, requires too much focus and hand steadiness. And I love the fact that the you can see that this part disappears into the background. It, it, I think it just adds an interesting variation, like just little lost edges are kind of cool. Okay. What's happening here? I'm just seeing it's a darker gray. So I'm just gonna put in, but I think I'm too dark. Yeah, well, no, maybe not. I'll grab a little bit of the lighter gray and then put that in too. So everything I, when I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about variation. I'm thinking about where is it dark? Where is it light? What variation am I seeing in the image? Because some areas will be darker and some areas will move to lighter just because of the way the light is falling on it. Try and see what time it is. Okay, we have 10 minutes. Let's continue on with this wing. And I can see that there's bits of red on this part of the ring. And I don't know if that is because the computer, when I was shifting it, um, 
just put in some red because it's there. It looks like it is because you can kind of see a line here and a line there. So that's interesting. So knowing what information you've got in front of you um, and how it got there. is really important. And I can see the shape is kind of wonky. So I'm just going to make it a, I don't have another picture of a um, pine grosbeak in exactly this position without something in the way. So I'm just going to guess and then I can go online and see if I can find somebody else who has a similar kind of picture so that I can come and make sure that I have the details correct and I have the wings laying down like they're supposed to lay down. We live in a glorious age. Okay, so there's a shape there. So closer to the wings, it's darker here. And as it moves away, there's more light on it. So it's a lighter value. The, and there's all sorts of lines in here that need to be, need to be organized. Okay, I'm just gonna come back in here and see if I can get those shapes done. So I have this little shape and I'm looking back and forth, this little shape. This little shape and there's a shape there and there's a shape here that comes down and is there. Then there's a lighter shape, not a hugely lighter shape, but lighter around it, just framing the edge of the feathers. What's interesting is dark feathers. So, you know, when you see birds that have black wingtips, black wingtips make the feathers stronger, which I find quite interesting, which is probably why when a raven flies over, you hear whoosh, 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 because they have such strong feathers. I've been having fun feeding the ravens. It's been cold, so I've been giving them lots of uh, lard and, and uh, leftover meat if there's anything that's left over that we didn't get to before you know we don't want to play with that anymore okay come back and lighten it up and there is some red in there there's a hint of red so let's just get a little bit of that that red and just sort of put it in so that I remember that's what I'm thinking about. Now, that is not how, it's a hint of red. It's not bright red, but it will remind me that that's what I'm, I'm thinking about when I go to paint, that there is that hint of red in there. Trying to get that shape so that the bird looks proper. Now, I'm going to come in with my Dakota brush and I'm going to reshape that a little bit because it's gone too far in and I don't really want it on that red because as I showed you, red shows everything through. You can still see the background that's coming through here. Well, we're almost done our hour. I think that, that this probably is a good place to stop. Um, spritz my water. So thank you for coming today. If you're interested in this raven, this little cute painting, it is uh, on eBay. I will have the link below. 
uh, si sign up on YouTube, su subscribe, and uh, hit the like button or the follow button on Facebook. And uh, I will see you, well, actually tomorrow a new video comes out on Fridays at 4 o'clock Mountain Time. Um, and it is my third video for my class. My class has like 14 or 15 videos. So it's, it's a long process to get it out once a week. It takes a while. Next week, I will have this image ready, like the painting, because I recorded the whole thing while I was painting. And I will uh, have that as a time lapse vo with a voiceover and I talk about how I'm working on it. So we will see you next week when we will go a lot further with this beautiful little red, lovely pine growth speak. Thanks for joining me. Okay, have a great creative week.